Skyrim is a game that is all about helping people. Retrieve a stolen golden claw. Find a family heirloom. There is an endless number of menial tasks to complete. Though sometimes what someone wants is so extreme that the best course of action is to just kill them, to avoid any kind of inconvenience. But what if you couldn't kill anyone? Can you beat Skyrim without attacking anything? Because December is the happy month where children receive gifts from a home invader, I decided to take it upon myself to spread some holiday cheer in the form of a Mitten Squad Christmas sweater sweatshirt that is available only for a limited time. Come January 1st, 2021, this sweater will be as dead as my dog. It's got all your favorite and relevant Mitten Squad items on it. Holiday trees, snowflakes, forks, and even buckets. I considered adding an air conditioner, but I really didn't want to spark an air conditioner genocide. I can assure you that despite the sweatshirt image appearing blurry in the preview, it will not be when it's made. It's an issue with the all over print preview. It looks normal on everything else. But there's not only a sweatshirt. There are a variety of other Christmas themed products for sale. Even a digital wallpaper, though that one's only there because I want to see how many people are stupid enough to pay for an image. The first thing I did to start this playthrough was start Skyrim, if you can believe that. Let the introduction play, ride into Skyrim on a wooden sled with wheels while I was off killing time by folding laundry. But boot camp sure does love to be a son of a bitch and f with me at all times. First, it was not even letting me play Black Ops Cold War because the graphics processor is integrated into the mouse or some such nonsense. I don't know computer, that's why I buy a Mac. I ultimately chose a high elf as my race for no particular reason really. That was the first lie I've ever told in my life. I chose an Atmer named Long Ale, that's a callback to a big brain moment I had a few days ago, as my character because I had me a plan, and an almost decent one at that. They start with a 25 in illusion and 20s in conjuration, destruction, restoration, alteration, and enchanting. If you're wearing your thinking helmet right now, you might be able to see why I went with this race. As I went to the block, I kept my eyes on a horse. I knew he wouldn't let me down. After a brief glance away, my boy gone and grew up. Alduin arrived, and my big beautiful horse was nowhere to be found. Getting into the first Skyrim Temple safe house took no effort. I was set free of my chains and shackles, or strings if you want to be technical about it. It was here I implemented the first stage of my plan. But first, we must ask ourselves what an attack really is. Usually, in say Fallout 3 for example, an attack is pretty much doing anything to any other character besides talking to them. Because Fallout 3 doesn't have any weapons that I can think of that legitimately do zero damage. Skyrim does have those though, and there's a way to prove it. Fury is a novice illusion spell that offers creatures and people up to level 6 a glimpse into the bucket dimension, something no mortal can handle, causing them to erupt into a blind rage and attack anything around them for 30 seconds. My apprehension about this spell stemmed from an enemy's health bar appearing when you use it on them. I assumed that it did like 1 damage or something. However, once again, console commands save the day. Get AV info health on an enemy to see their current health and their total health. After using Fury on them, their health is exactly the same, and a frenzied captain getting PTSD and slashing his comrades' throats doesn't count as a kill, so you're theoretically home free. But the big Todd in the sky seized all, and I knew he wouldn't see this as a true without attacking anything run. A pacifist run maybe, but that's not the kind of challenge I'm after. I want to attack zero people, influence zero people using spells, a 100% no attacking anything regardless of whether that attack does damage playthrough. With all of that in mind, and with a few buckets in my collection, I decided that Fury would only be used in case of an emergency. As with all other challenges that restrict weapons or spells, anything that only affects me is still okay to use. Armor, healing spells, covering myself in the bark of a murdered tree, it's all mostly legal. Closer to the great outdoors, I performed a puppet show with a probably dead body by draping its body over a puddle of fire to get him closer to his caged brother. Tried to offer a bear a peace offering of a wheelbarrow and some fruit, accidentally spilled it all into the water, might have done more harm than good with that one, and was finally outside. One of the seemingly most important but factually almost irrelevant things I did was activate the Mage Stone to make all magical things go up in level more faster. That was the first time I've ever done that. The Steam achievement is proof. And Steam would never lie unless you entered your password, then it'll lie and say it doesn't recognize your computer. 
before hitting up the local markets to barter with the locals. I discovered Bleak Falls Barrow to save myself some time, chalked some magic up the mountain in hopes of hitting a goat in the middle of a family dinner that would cause the daddy goat to slam the table and yell, because the second great goat is having a hard time understanding long division. He starts crying, gets tears all over his homework, tells the teacher that he just spilled some water. Social services place the child in a safer home. You know, I just wanted some good old fashioned fun for the whole family. Inside the shop, I bought a few spells that mayhaps be useful later and tested an idea, but I won't tell you what it is yet. It worked, and my next stop was White Run Farms to ride me a big horse all the way to Dawnstar. Predictably, the feline merchants were nowhere to be found, fueling the fiery idea inside my head that they're dependent on where you are in the main quest line. Don't try to correct me if I'm wrong. I've already decided that I'm right. The cat's chest is still open for plundering, which means you can get your claws on some fairly decent low-level armor, a bunch of potions, poisons to sell, weapons to disenchant, and soul gems to reincarnate your co-worker who always hated the sound of people chewing as a fork so you can torment them forever. I broke down the magical spells infused in many of the special items, which was really a waste of time, sold a few more things to the Golden Claw Daddy, and entered Bleak Falls Barrow. This is the first of many dungeons you're likely to encounter in Skyrim, and in a pacifist run, if you don't know what you're doing, this is probably the first place you'll have problems. Luckily for inanimate objects everywhere, spider webs have no feelings, or maybe they just lack the ability to express it so they suffer in silence. Either way, you can punch the webbing down without doing damage to the thief or the spiders waiting anxiously to slurp on his liquefied innards. Then, because I couldn't kill him myself, I let him run into a crowd of people with swords. Now, the kind of person who owns a sword, they probably have issues with personal space, if you know what I'm trying to say. They handled Arvel real quick. I got the claw, avoided all foes as I pressed deeper into the barrow, and eventually found myself face to face with a Draugr Overlord. Again, there is a strategy to employ here. Natural disasters and acts of God do not count as murder. I dare any judge to say otherwise. Which means if you lure an overlord into an environmental hazard and it kills itself, besides the blood that spatters all over your body, you've got no blood on your hands. If you're hoping for a real deal pacifist run where nobody dies, that's impossible. It would end right here. The boss has the dragon slate, and the main quest can't proceed unless his body is limp on the floor. With that stone slab, I finally entered Whiterun, met the Jarl, told him there was a big lizard on my front porch that freaked me out enough to make me use the back door. Farankar sent me to retrieve his tablet, I told him I already had it, he went to tell dad that I didn't charge it so waiting for it to charge shouldn't come out of his tablet time, and he sent all his favorite weasels to take the life of a different lizard to teach all the lizards a lesson. You don't fuck with the Skyrim. Obviously, I didn't do anything when the dragon arrived. I sat atop my tower, waiting for a brave knight to rescue me from this prison. The wizards and guards killed the cute guy flying around that I hoped was here to save me. I ripped the bones out of his body, peeled the skin off his frame, absorbed his soul, got the gift of a living, breathing, moving truck from the Jarl, and absconded across the mountain to meet the Greybeards. I made history by taking the proper path up the mountain. Sure, I did some brief mountain climbing adventures to remind me of simpler times, like when I was beating Skyrim with only a fork, or when I didn't have to worry about me or a loved one being du- That's two. That's- that's f***ing two. Or when I didn't have to worry about me or a loved one being du- Or when- Keep f***ing messing this up. Or when I didn't have to worry about me or a loved one being du- <sighs> I'm gonna kill somebody. Or when I didn't have to worry about me or a loved one being diagnosed with mesothelioma. Wow, I did it. Atop the mountain, I dropped off some supplies in the box. Not food though. I placed Arvel's journal and the Jarl of White Run's axe to frame the Greybeards for killing an innocent thief should someone decide to start sticking their giant nose somewhere it doesn't belong. I blew my own mind by learning that the unrelenting force shout doesn't actually do any damage, at least as far as this console command is concerned. That's a useful fact to know. Only 9 more facts and we've got ourselves another 10 things you didn't know about Skyrim video. I learned a new word. Bori forced me to absorb his knowledge of his wood. I ran faster than I did in the 4th grade race that I came in 3rd place in. 
finally got that trip down memory lane when Arnold didn't hand me an award, just like how I didn't get a fucking bronze ribbon for coming in third. I'm starting to think that the private Christian school I went to had a vendetta against people who they thought would one day open a Discord server that is sometimes Christian. The town blacksmith gave his life for me in the slaying of the cultists. I thought the key to his house was my reward for a job well done, because I didn't cry once as I watched him die. His dumbass daughter wasn't a fan of me stealing her family's food. I considered kicking her into the fire, but I didn't want to get my indoor shoes dirty. From there, it was off to Ustengrav to find Master Bori's recorder. Mom's gonna be pissed if he lost another one. I made sure to snag the Become Earl shout from the way down part of the dungeon, but other than that, nothing really happened. I'm playing on very easy. I have oak flesh and can heal myself at any moment. Nothing down in Ustengrav was a threat to me, not even more webbing. With Ustengrav now a far away and distant memory, I met Donald, stole some of her stuff, and we set off to kill us a dragon. I knew this was gonna be tricky. Back when I was a skeever, I had a giant rat trap of a time trying to kill a dragon without attacking. Donald would be helpless on her own, but there's still an option left. As it turns out, there's a way to make a companion kill not count as a kill. If you dismiss them right before they're engaged in combat or commitment, now that I think about it, saying engaged in commitment seems a little repetitive and redundant. Unlike Fallout 4, the companions don't just immediately disappear back to Sanctuary to be annoyed to death by Preston and Mama Murphy. They walk away, which means you've gotta time it right. They need to be close enough that when the fight begins after you dismiss them, that they'll come help. If they're too far away, they won't care, and if you wait too long, they'll start fighting before they can be returned for store credit. Unfortunately, things don't always go as planned. A group of hired street toughs tracked me down and laid waste to both my Donald and my donkey, and I don't know if the dragon was still too busy being birthed or was a sucker for watching people die or what, but he didn't even try to help me fight back against the bully trying to slice me into thirds. I did try using fury on the swordsman to see what he'd do. He died in one bite from the dragon. Nevertheless, I reloaded a save and let the battle rage on. Then I, uh, again, for reasons that don't matter, tried to jump over the sword as he swung. It didn't work. Donald handled the thug, the dragon did a drive-by sniffing of a fresh dead body, and I watched in awe as my two worthless almost companions battled the dragon. It took a few minutes, but I never even came close to dying. I was befuddled by the Greybeards after returning their flute. For some reason, I thought he snubbed me, like part of the quest didn't complete properly. Still had zero kills though. I'd forgotten that learning a part of a word is what always comes after giving them back their recorder. Next came the Thalmor Embassy. Didn't have much to give Melbourne. Armor, some potions, a dozen buckets, lockpicks maybe, that's about it. Inside the embassy, my curious nature struck me again. There was a free axe sitting right by the fire. So what happens if you chop the cook's head off and force Melbourne to play sexy, insane lumberjack with you? Once I killed the cat and attempted to knock out Melbourne with a few well-placed cracks across the face with the sharp side of an axe, nothing happens. I reloaded a save, earled my way outside, and the issue of getting the information I was after became one of my top priorities. Not number one, but top five at least. Thankfully, getting down to the party room where all the fun stuff happens is easy. The door key is in a chest, which is a stupid hiding spot. You've gotta hide the key in plain sight so they won't notice it. You could tape it to the side of a coffee table, or even take a page out of my playbook by color coding the keys to the lock and keeping the keys attached to the lock. Point being, someone down here has gotta die. No way around it. Fury was the only option that wouldn't necessarily fail the challenge. A Thalmor soldier did die. I spoke to Desmond and rode to Riften to find an old man fit for duty. The rat way is easy enough to navigate without attacking anything. Just keep moving towards the waypoint. Don't linger in the halls to smell the gunk growing on the walls, and you shouldn't take too much damage as you move towards Esbern. Escaping with Bernie was even easier. Well, it should have been anyway. Esbern can handle the people trying to kill us. My job was navigation, and my god did I suck at it. I got lost at the same part I always do. Couldn't tell you why, it just be what it be. Free from that wretched hole, but still thoroughly stuck in the one that is my life, I returned to Delfino Plaza, learned there's some dialogue if Esbern is just outside the door. I can tell Bethesda has learned a lot since I started saying Meow Motors is better than Skyrim. Despite stealing his map and his book, Esbern still told us about Alduin's Wall, a long since forgotten place whose specialness is only rivaled by Delphine's basement. 
where I managed to make a feather levitate over a mug. If you ride to Morthak, then take the opposite south, kinda east-ish way towards the cave, you should be alright as long as you don't piss off any dragons. Inside, Bernie's flaming mistress can handle the rabble-rousers, a few puzzles, grab the blade's armor to embrace the irony, you can figure out what that is for yourself, learn about Dragonrend, threaten to tell the police about what the Greybeards are hiding in their chests, besides mesophilioma if they don't learn you a new word, and it's up the mountain we go. I did stop on the way to say hello to an old friend, but that's all I did. Once more, perhaps for the first real time in this challenge, we reach an actual impasse. Parthenax won't spill his guts unless you breathe on him. No other shouts will work, only the one that spits fire. The one that does damage. No way around it. Even YMCAH did it in his pacifist video. At least I would assume he did. I watched most of it. To answer the question, you cannot beat Skyrim without attacking anything. But we're not done yet. The big boy teached me about an Elder Scroll trademark lurking somewhere in this plane of existence. I wasted little time by traveling out to the frozen hell, resting to the north of the College of Winterhold. Somehow I got lost on the way to the underground igloo. Not sure how that could have happened. The nerd offered me up some solid advice. Go to Blackreach for an Elder Scroll. He had no reason to lie, but then again, I had no reason to assume he wasn't lying. Inside the worst part of Skyrim, it was actually pretty nice, only because I didn't have the option of fighting back. I did survive the automatic spank machine, never done that before. It's barely interesting enough to mention, but here we are. After I solved the puzzle without needing help, trust me I'm a professional gamer, the Elder Scroll presented itself to me just as it had this young lad many moons ago. He couldn't handle it. The vomit still being there is a mystery, but a bucket is a bucket, and I wasn't gonna let a little bit of someone else's lunch ruin my afternoon. Knowing what was about to transpire, I returned to Whiterun to get my donkey back. It was too late. My old donkey has fallen for me. Can you blame her though? There are only two problems. She gave me a book of riddles as a thanks for letting me fight that dragon alone. I promptly took that book and threw it in the fire right in front of her where it belonged. She watched it burn. I had to read the scroll at the Band-Aid in time, and I've been across the street enough to know that Parthenex cannot defeat him alone. And because I can't attack at all, a companion is needed for the same reason as the last dragon. I've made this kind of hyperbolic statement about fights and videos before, but this time I really mean it. This was a massive fucking time sink. From the time I first used Dragon Rend on Alduin, it does no damage, it doesn't count, to when he fled for Sovngarde, more than 30 minutes had passed. With help from the dragon and the donkey, he can go down to 50 to 60% health in a few minutes. But then it's up to Lydia to do the rest of the damage, and she can only get in a few attacks before Alduin knocks her back into sleepy time. Things got a little easier after about 8 minutes. At a certain point, Alduin remains grounded, so the constant use of Dragon Rend is unnecessary. Necessary, or so I thought. About 11 minutes into the fight, Alduin randomly decided to heal himself and take off again, effectively starting the battle over, only this time I wouldn't have Parthenax on my side to do half the damage. Luckily, I saved like a mother the entire time, so I could go back in time and blast the with magic words to keep him on the ground. Eventually, after another 15 minutes of peeping out from behind cover to give Lydia as much time to attack as possible, Alduin was slain, and something terrible happened. As Alduin was sitting there, pouting, I checked my stats. Two people had been killed by me. I was heartbroken, stricken with grief at the thought that I'd killed two people. I knew two people had died in the embassy, but I wasn't sure if this was them. I spent a good while, a couple seconds, wondering about who it was I possibly could have killed. The only times I'd had anything other than healing, oak flesh, or fury in my hands was when I had to cut down webbing, or when I said hello to an old friend on the way to the throat of the world. Content, since I'd already failed, I performed CPR on the Jarl to wake him from his slumber, asked the Greybeards if we could have a slumber party, and I began tracking down all the guests I'd be forcing to come to my party. I knew going into this meeting that it was a once in a lifetime opportunity. I couldn't let emotions get in the way of my own success. I had to do something I've never done before or since. I gave every guest their own bucket from my own private collection. After everyone took their seats, I realized that Ulfric's side was still lacking a guest. That'd be rude enough on its own, but to leave a bucket sitting there all alone? They crossed the line. Only a couple people have crossed and still been left alive without facing any kind of consequences. Naturally, I sided with General Tullius every chance I could. I even got a nice POV shot of what it's like to be a bucket, which was accompanied by an oddly well-done transition. Nothing that happens in this meeting actually matters. Let's move on. 
I trapped the dragon, stood on top of the snare as it flew back upwards towards the ceiling when the dragon was released, and we flew to Skaldavn. If you're wondering like I was, jumping off the top of the trap will almost kill you. Sprint and the Become Ethereal Shout are going to be your best friends inside the Skaldafin Temple. It's a pretty heavily fortified place, but nothing inside has to be killed. Just rip down some webbing with your fist, solve a few puzzles, and there's one guy who does have to die. Another Draugr Overlord. This one is harder than the first one. There's a trap in this location, the cell, where you can go without seeing another loading screen. All you've got to do is lure the overlord down the spiral stairs to the arrow trap. The question then becomes, if you're the one activating the trap, does it count as an attack? I went with a very practical, no. Yes? Why did I say yes? The actual answer is no. As my answer, because he did activate it a few times on its own, and it's no different from the swing traps or other traps. Defeating soon is the next tricky part. That was not the whole truth. It would have been tricky if I hadn't recently played through Skyrim as a skeever. It might have been a different playthrough where I got here. It doesn't really matter. What matters is progressing the main quest without attacking him is easy. All you have to do is get him into the river, so he can be carried down the waterfall to Sovngarde too. He's a very aggressive little boy, so getting him over the hedge might take a little while. While, but it's certainly possible. Then you've just gotta wait for him to go sailing away, enter the hut, speak to your school, church, and summer guidance counselors, and the final battle begins. This is probably going to be anticlimactic. It wasn't a very interesting fight. I used Dragon Ren to keep him on the ground, while all the other heroes provided moral support in my hour of need. Then a rock hit Soon on the head, and he got involved too. After so much fighting, Alduin was a little tired forcing my hand. He's what's called a protected NPC. What that means is that it must be the player character who kills him. Even if you push him off a cliff like soon, which I didn't do because I didn't come prepared, it won't kill him. From what I understand, he'll be gone, but the quest won't go to the next stage, so you'll be trapped forever. In a beautiful twist of fate, I decided to use Unrelenting Force, the first shout I'd ever learned to defeat Alduin. Based on everything I've said in the video, it shouldn't have killed him, I tested it scientifically. It does zero damage. I don't have an explanation for this. Either I didn't fully understand the console command I was using, or I f***ed up somewhere. Regardless of what the truth is and how many mistakes weren't my fault, I did not beat Skyrim without attacking anything. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Thanks to the Champion tier supporters as well as other channel members for making videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server by going to mitten.land. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.